What is up, Nuggets? Killer Pizza here with a brand new video for all you rascals and rapscallions out there. Now pretty much what I'm going to show you guys is an update on my horror collection. Regardless of this was me playing the waiting game for something I ordered online, or going out and finding some cool stuff firsthand. Now I did a previous Blu-ray hunting video this last week. If that's something you'd like to see more of, let me know. The reason I was iffy on it in the first place is because I never really wanted to look like that weirdo talking to himself on his camera phone in a store, yet here I am talking to myself on my camera phone. So what difference does it make? I can get more of those in the future. If people are interested in seeing those, let me know. But back to what we're here for, the horror, the update on my horror collection. And the first one I'm going to show you guys is Lucio Fulci, City of the Living Dead. Now, I've seen the original zombie. Apparently, this is considered to some a sequel to it by Lucio. I have not seen this before. I'm excited to see it because if you've seen any horror, Italian gore horror movies, you know they're the real deal, real splatter fest. So, I guess in a nutshell, the plot to this, the seventh gates of hell are about to be open. And these zombies are going to come out of the earth and chaos ensues. But I guess these aren't like regular zombies. They're more like ghost-like entities. They can sneak up behind you without you hearing like Jason Voorhees style. Yada, yada, yada. I don't really know. Haven't seen it. I know this one will be good. Yes. Hobo with a shotgun. Now this is one I would always see in video stores. Uh when they were still around maybe i'd be in family video and i would always see this one always look at because i believe it's still, it had the same uh artwork a lot of times when these are released on blu-ray certain horror movies they'll give you new album or new cover artwork but i feel like this is the very original cover and this is what drew me in and i don't know why i never rented it but i bought it and i'm gonna watch it exploitation i guess a little bit apparently uh it's about a hobo who takes a train car to a new town he's trying to start over and find you know a fresh start better himself maybe i don't know in the process he sees all the crime and everything going on in the city and decides he should buy a shotgun and you can think of the rest you can picture in your head like i i am right now we'll see if it matches what i'm thinking but this seems pretty straight and narrow what we're going to get here hopefully some good kills hopefully some good gore we shall see Return of the Living Dead Part 3. Now, a lot of people really hate this one, and a lot of people really hate the second one, but I love the three first originals so much, to the point that I don't even count four and five, maybe even six. That I could, I could imagine they made more at this point. But this was definitely the last of the good films in this franchise. Very different from the first two. Though the second's very different from the first, this is completely left field i used to watch this one with my sister a lot and i i really like it uh kind of like a take on romeo and juliet but with zombies pretty much you know uh what what the kid is dating this girl that his dad doesn't like he wants to move to a new city but the kid doesn't want to leave because he's in love with this girl right here and uh she ends up dying at one point which i won't explain how because fuck y'all and uh <laughs> But anyways, his dad works at the the lab that's trying to figure out and solve the problem of the zomb of the zombies and the uh, trioxin and whatnot, and he brings her back to life. But she slowly but surely starts to turn into a zombie, and this is like an ultimate love story because he he can't he can't give up on her even though she's dead. And chaos ensues. It's a theme for tonight. But, I mean, I think this one is very underrated. Most horror buffs will probably tell you this ain't no good, but they're tripping. I say, if somebody tells you something ain't no good, it's it's worth it's worth you to give it a shot. You know, bad influence here, but, you know, different, difference of opinions. This is good. Check it out. Funhouse. Now, I don't know much about this. It's mostly a blind buy. I, I read a little bit, a couple reviews uh, on Amazon without trying to get any spoilers, just to, you know, make sure it's good. Like, a lot of times I go on Amazon, I'll skim through it, and if I hear, like, oh, gore sucked, the characters suck, that really throws me off. But 
Apparently, this is pretty dang good. This is Toby Hooper, who directed the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Poltergeist. And, I mean, I couldn't really pass up on it. Carnival, I know it's going to be pretty spooky and fun in the first place. But, uh, I guess it's about two couples who go out on a date to a carnival. They get locked inside the fun house, and some crazy killer who has a vendetta comes after all of them. Blood, gore, chaos ensues. Once again. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Now this is a pretty cool set here. I haven't opened it yet, but I'm excited to check it out. This is from the Chiodo Brothers, who are mostly well known for their work on uh, Team America World Police with all the puppetry and everything. And if we're talking effects and puppetry, th these clowns are like the most cheesy yet most badass thing you could see at the same time. This is really a mixed movie for a lot. A lot of people will just shit all over this one. I don't see how this one is classic. A lot of good fun, good comedy for a horror movie, which I think is very important. Sometimes it really helps to lighten the mood and kill the tension. You know, then build the tension when it's needed. Blah, blah, blah. They shoot guns that have popcorn coming out of them. These guys are cool. I hate clowns, but I like these guys. This is the definition of a cult classic. Check this out. Demons. Now, this is another Italian horror film. Uh, so, you know, Italian gore and whatnot, all that fun stuff. I always remember the original cover had this creepy-ass dude on it. He used to always scare the shit out of me in the store. Never once rented it. Never seen it. When I finally read what this movie was about, it was pretty surprising because, I mean, to a degree, it's what you would expect, a bunch of demons slaughtering people. But I guess the, the plot goes, uh, some creepy masked man gives these random people exclusive tickets to a screening, to this horror movie, like an early screening, and then they get in there and some woman gets infected somehow and becomes a demon. It spreads. More and more people become demons in the theater. I think, like, things come out of the movie screen in the theater at one point, and somehow in a small space... Like, snakes in a plane style, they're stuck in this theater, and it, we'll see if they get out alive, right? Uh, but I did not expect it to almost be, like, all in a movie theater. But, you know, this one has been on my list for a while. with something I wanted to check out, and I'm finally going to do so. I actually think I might watch this one tonight. So if anybody would like to maybe see a review about this, let me know. And then I had to get the sequel. Because I just couldn't help myself. Apparently this is a little bit of the same. But instead of being in a movie theater. They're in a, a high rise apartment building. And some kid is watching a horror movie on TV. And the demon comes out of the screen. Into the into reality. And starts uh, infecting everybody. And then it's a survival game against these demons. And <laughs> Damn I, I kind of look like this demon. But, you know, they seem pretty similar. I think they're made about a year apart. I'm expecting good shit. I mean, the, the premise is pretty good. The demons look scary as hell. And you know Italian gore. It's always going to be good. Excited to check this one out. If I can stay awake, which I doubt it because I work very early mornings, I might pop this one in after the first. We shall see. American Gothic. Now, I don't have much to say about this one, because I don't remember much, but this is one that me and my sister used to watch all the time when we were kids. We would go to, back in the day, we used to go to Videotron in Waterford, Michigan. It was three movies, three dollars, three nights. I would always get a pro wrestling tape or one of the Rocky movies. She would always get a horror movie, and that's where my love for horror has started. I know for years we tried to figure out what this movie was called and could not figure it out. I finally figured it out, and when she gets back from her trip, I can't wait to show her that I found this movie. It's pretty much kind of like these kids are taking a helicopter trip somewhere for vacation, and then they are running low on fuel or something, so they have to stop at this remote island where it's uh, these old folk, and they're like, they're, they're kids who like are real old, but they act like they're children still, and the hospitality quickly turns into like something a little more if you know what i'm saying and the friends start you know disappearing one by one almost like a slasher format but 
you know, I'm excited to watch this one back. I could praise this one all day, but I haven't seen this since I was probably 10 years old. So uh, maybe another one I'll check out soon and let you guys know what I think of this. From Beyond. Now, I've never seen this one. I'm a huge fan of Reanimator. And this is like an HP Lovecraft story too. And apparently this is also uh, kind of considered an unofficial sequel to Reanimator. Uh, what is this? The, it's kind of sci-fi. Not really my style. I, I'm just here for the body horror, to be honest with you. Look at that. Shit. You know, this one is known to get pretty brutal. And I'm excited to see it for myself. But apparently the scientists open up make a machine that can control the sixth sense that's called the regen regenerator i believe or something like that and the machine you know gets out of control and i don't know i really don't know i'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of this if you have let me know what you think because i'm about to find out pretty soon uh like i said it's it's body horror all the way that's what we're here for blood guts gore let's go Last but not least, one I was very iffy about buying, because I'm not necessarily into these style of movies, but the more horror I get, the more I gotta look into some of these exploitation films. What is this, Blood Sucking Freaks? Now, I don't really know what to say about this. You can make what you want of it. This came out in 1975, I believe, and it's pretty much a guy is throwing a stage show, and it's all just nasty stuff you know just dismembering and, and and open brain surgery i think and just a bunch of nasty crazy shit and they actually advertised this i believe back in the day like it was real and i'm sure it was banned many places i have a very vague memory of this movie i used to go to my friend cliff's house back in the day and stay the night when we were probably 12 13 years old and his older sister was a bit of a punk rocker so she had a lot of cool shit and when she would leave for the night, some nights when I would stay over, we would, you know, sneak in there and he would show me all their cool shit. And one was this really violent, gory, exploitation film movie. And I swear, this has got to be what we were watching. I just, I don't know what it is. Just these visuals on the back and my memory of it. This has got to be it. I'm excited, but nervous to watch this one. Ugh, if you know anything about Blood Sucking Freaks, let me know what I'm in store for. Please do that, and maybe I'll actually watch it without needing a barf bag, but we shall see. Because, you know, that's the thing sometimes with these practical effects. Even when you go even further back, they almost look more graphic. The, you, you know, it, it looks sometimes cornier, cheesier, older, the further you go back with practical effects. But a lot of times it can look a lot more real. I mean, I don't need to go on a rant about CGI here, you know, obviously, but... Nothing beats practical effects. And that's the ongoing theme with most of these movies you see that I got. Good practical effects. Anyways, I digress. I could ramble on all day long. But, these movies. Brand new into the collection. I'm excited to check each and every one of these out. Now, if you've seen any of these movies before and you have anything you want to tell me about it. Any memories you have with it. Anything at all, or any movies you want to suggest for me to watch eventually, I'm all for that too. All for new gore, new horror. Let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.